Hello, everybody, and welcome to my channel. Finally reaching the episode number three of Teen Mom, the next chapter. And let's just get into it. Janelle is coming to visit Orlando, wants to have lunch with Brianna so that they can chit chat. They've stayed in touch over the years. They've been friends every now and again. They'll give each other a call and a holler. Brianna has no idea what is true and what is not when it comes to the tabloids. So it'll be good to get it from the horse's mouth. Leah says parenting with Jeremy has not been easy. That relationship was one big old mess. After three years of hell, they finally got a divorce. Leah has tried to remain cordial for the sake of Addie as far as the parenting situation, but she's found that when Addie goes over to visit Jeremy, he's not even there majority of the time. Addie's just there with his mother. So something really terrifying happened when Leah was working her shift as a waitress a few nights ago. Jeremy came in there causing a scene with his girl and Leah ended up getting involved and then her manager ended up getting involved and saying, you know, you're not going to do anything to her. I'm really surprised by this. I thought I thought everything was going well. I was very surprised that it seems to me, I'm just saying, it seems to me that Jeremy might have a drinking problem, possibly, maybe. You think? Anyway, so props to the hostess for giving Leah a heads up and telling her, you know, stay back here because your ex-husband's up front acting a fool. What he basically was demanding was that he had a seat at Leah's table and he claimed to Leah that she had Addie home by herself for seven hours. But it's okay when you go gallivanting by yourself while Addie is at your place supposed to be visiting with you and she's all up underneath your mother. That's okay. And I don't even believe what he's saying anyway. I don't know why y'all be even, why do you even contend with drunk people? Because drunk people, drunk people don't even know what the hell they're saying. So we're here with Mackenzie. Mackenzie, I, I really like you a lot more than I used to, but I'm really sorry. You're still boring. I'm sorry. (laughs) You are the same boring person that you were on Team Mom 3. I'm really sorry to tell you. She says Cassanio moved to the United States from Jamaica about 10 years ago. And he moved here because he was playing soccer. And, uh, you know, he's now a soccer coach there in Florida. Mackenzie says that they've been very aligned. They're already talking about having a baby. How about we talk about getting married first? I mean, we, we, I'm not judging you because I did it backwards as well. But, um, how about you get married first this time, Mackenzie? I mean, you can do what you want. You're grown. I'm just saying. So Mackenzie is here with her friends and I'm really sorry. I'm not always going to have the names. You just go back and read the names, okay? Because I'm not always going to know names. I've never been good with names. But Mackenzie's sitting here. Her and Cassanio are about to celebrate their one year together. And every time she brings up marriage, he kind of changes the subject. But yet y'all talking about a baby and he doesn't change the subject then? That doesn't make any damn sense. Mackenzie lets us know, because girl, I did not know that you were diabetic and I've been watching this show a million years. But then again, you know, like I said, I, I, I didn't necessarily find you the most interesting. So I probably would have missed a lot of details. I'm really sorry, Mackenzie. But she says she's diabetic and her last pregnancy was very rough on her. Mackenzie says that she got her tubes tied seven years ago. So if she decided to have another baby, of course, she would have to have them untied. So Cassanio and Mackenzie sit the children down and let them know, listen, we're going out on a little datey date. And I guess um, who's the oldest? I forgot that quickly who the oldest was. But anyway, the oldest is going to be watching over the younger ones. I still would probably have hired a sitter, but you know, that's just me. Janelle makes her re-entry to Teen Mom. I already know her entire story, but for those of you who don't know, I'm going to be tortured having to <laughs> having to repeat everything that I know. It's fine. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here, you know, to give you that sweet, sarcastic, delicious recap, you know. <laughs> MTV, I just don't understand why we needed 20 girls on one show. Janelle became a teen mom when she was 17 years old and her son's name is Jace. After having Jace, she admits that she did not make the greatest decisions. And so her mom, Barbara, got custody, temporary 
which turned out to be permanent, but whatever, custody of Jace. Janelle says that she searched for love externally because she felt like she never had that at home. Janelle eventually had her second son, Kaiser, with Nathan. I'm cringing. I'm cringing. I'm cringing. If you guys look up being Nathan recap, it's on here. They had a baby together named Kaiser. Things didn't work out with Nathan and she very quickly met David. So obviously Janelle has a problem staying solo and she has a problem not jumping from relationship to relationship with, which, you know, a lot of us have had that problem in the past. Some of y'all still do. Okay, I ain't judging. I'm just saying to give yourself a break between relationship, whether you need therapy, you need to work on yourself, you need to work on being happy by yourself, whatever the hell it is, do that and make sure you are the best you before you get into another relationship. Things changed for her when she met David. David was evil. He is evil. Anyway, and man, I go way back to when Janelle was fired after he killed that damn dog. I swear. I swear. Her and David had a baby named Inslee, her first daughter, and they ended up getting married. It took Janelle some time to realize that they weren't in a healthy relationship. David was very abusive. He was verbally abusive. He would use um, her relationship, her like up and down relationship with her mom against her, saying that her mom doesn't love her and all this stuff. And he would literally physically hold her down. And she called the cops on him, pretty sure more than one time. I'm just glad you got out of that situation. Okay, I know nobody's perfect. And and you still have your faults like we all do. But girl, I'm just glad you got away from David. That man, I, I never liked him for you, ever. Janelle says that she felt like she was being treated like a child when she was with David. She was always being reprimanded and she always had to walk on eggshells around him all the time. And Janelle says that since she left David, it's been a huge weight off of her shoulders. And what she really wants now is she just wants her children to have a fresh new start. This additional acting, ma'am, when you already told us in the prior scene that Janelle was meeting you for lunch and then have the nerve at lunch to say you will never guess who I am with we're here at Gary's house Gary and Christina's house it is still Leah's birthday so this is the night of the birthday Leah says that her mom texted her and Gary said did you answer her and she said no she didn't apologize she didn't acknowledge anything that she did so she didn't even answer that text message Leah says all you did was ask what time it was and I totally missed that Amber was saying to Gary in the last episode why are you acting like an a-hole for no reason I don't know how I missed that part but she's free Freaking awful. Gary says that he really was trying his best not to get into anything with her. Christina asks Leah, what were you hoping for when she messaged you? And Leah says, I don't know an apology or something that shows that she takes accountability for how she behaved. And Leah says, I don't know why she had to do that on my birthday. Gary says that they were excited to talk about James and stuff. You know, they hadn't seen Amber in a while or whatever. And that's why they really, why they invited her. We all know why they really invited her. It was because they, Christina and Gary, have always tried to foster a relationship with Leah. But if somebody is toxic, like I said in the last video, if they're toxic, it can be a mother, a father, a sister, a brother. Then they don't need to be involved in the child life I do not care that's just my opinion okay so Christina says well how is that James thing gonna pan out because they usually want to visit with James who James is Leah's half brother Amber went out there and had a baby with this man named Andrew who she also abused by the way the same way she abused freaking Gary but they're wondering how they how's the visits with with him gonna go now now that Amber pretty much just acted a damn fool and isn't willing to acknowledge her part in that situation which was all her part because everything was messed up because of her so Leah says we can suck it up for the sake of James Gary says he has the ability to suck it up. Both of you do. And I think that is a big problem. Y'all let Amber get away with too much crap, honestly, that she feels she can do and say whatever she wants, because you're not going to come to my stepdaughter's dinner acting like that. OK, granted, you don't want to cause a scene disrespecting my husband. It's a problem OK? because I'm going to war for my man. Gary says that he's going to wait a few days, let this thing marinate a little bit. And when he knows that James in town, he'll drop her a text message, you know, a friendly little, a friendly little text message to see when they can go and see him. Leah says to Gary and Christina that obviously both of you are bullheaded, but there was no reason for my mom to act like that. And it's not bullheaded. Um, Leah, I know that you're young, but I don't think that's the right word. I think that 
they're doing their best to keep the peace because your mom is a little erratic. She seems like she's off of her medication. I'm not trying to insult folks with mental illness because I believe many of us deal with mental illness. Some of us diagnosed and some of us undiagnosed. So I'm not trying to put a stigma on mental illness. I'm just clearly stating what it appears to be to me because I've been watching this show a million years and I know when Amber is on her meds and I know when she's not. And it just seems like she isn't. Caitlin got a text message from her brother, Nick, that April, who is her mom, Nova's grandmother, went into the hospital, needed a little oxygen, nothing serious. This situation caused Caitlin anxiety and she really didn't know how to react. Tyler asks her, what did the therapist suggest that you do in this situation? And Caitlin says to just, you know, go with how I feel. And she says that if nobody would have been there for her mom, of course she would have been. She really wants the kids to be able to visit with April. The only thing Kate wants from her mom is respectful communication and to not be drinking around her or her children. Cops suggested to Leah as they were summoned to the restaurant that she should file a protective order against Jeremy. So that's what she's doing. So right after Leah filed for the protective order, Jeremy was served. And unfortunately, Addie was with Jeremy when he was served. Addie says that she understands as Leah's explaining to her that the situation wasn't ideal. Addie admits that she initially was mad at Leah because she thought that she was the cause of this. And Leah says here that it's very difficult in a situation like this where you have a toxic ex and you have a child that genuinely loves that toxic ex. It is finally date night. I'm getting tired of y'all kissing Amber's ass. I'm sorry. I'm really tired of it. I'm getting tired of it. I understand why, but I'm getting tired of it. But anyway, it's been a couple of days for this situation to blow over. So Gary is confirming with Christina. Hey, you know, does Amber have James right now? Christina says, yeah, probably. So Gary's like, okay, let me just send a little message and see, you know, where Amber is at with having them visit James. Christina says, what if she replies back and the answer is hell no, y'all can't see him or whatever. Gary says, well, then that's her problem. Exactly. That's my answer. That's her freaking problem. Gary says that he does the best to keep the peace so that he can foster that relationship with Amber and Leah. And Leah herself says, if it wasn't for James, I would have nothing to do with that woman. Okay, she didn't say it in that way, but pretty much that is what it is. So Caitlin's brother, Nick, let her know that April is out of the hospital. Nova was really shaken up about this situation. Kate says she encouraged Nova to reach out to April. You know, you have her phone number. Go ahead and contact her. April's out of the hospital and she wants to meet at a restaurant. She has a car back. And Kate and Tyler, they're not going, but they will let Nova go. They will you know, Kate will drop her off and let her spend time with her grandmother. And it was so sad because Nova was like, I kind of wanted everybody to get together as a family. Kate is like, mm, yeah, you just you just go on. You just go on and spend time with your grandmother. A day of the court hearing. And I hate seeing people cry. We're back at this lunch. And Brianna asks, how are you? To Janelle. Janelle says that she's good. The kids are good. They're back home with a sitter right now. And now that her and David have separated, the kids are a lot better. Janelle got back full custody of Jace. Jace ran away. And once he ran away, CPS got involved. And they ended up taking him to the hospital because that's what they do in North Carolina. Jace said that David strangled him. First of all, he's a piece of crap human. So I don't doubt that this is true at all. Thank God you got away from that man. And you do need to change states immediately. Well, Janelle was letting David know that he had to leave because Jace was coming back and he had charges on him for child abuse. Janelle says it was a blessing in disguise because they put a no contact order between Jace and David. Brianna asks about seeing her go to court one of those days. And Janelle says that was for a permanent restraining order. She had to write out this long statement and she's just reading part of it on her phone. And basically he was physically abusive and he was verbally abusive and he was mentally abusive. Janelle says that she needs to get out of North Carolina, get a fresh start. Brianna lets her know that she's proud of her. Janelle's thinking about looking at some houses out there in Florida, getting a feel for the area. And Brianna lets her know, hey, you know, I saw you talking for hours with this guy named August. And Janelle, girl, you literally just jumped out of the mother freaking furnace and you trying to jump right back into the frying pan. Can you just not be hot for a minute when it comes to men? Can you just be by yourself for a while? 
get your life together, start a new life for the kids, relocate. That's fine. I don't mind you relocating. But why you need to be even thinking about relocating in Las Vegas of all places? Because you know August that lives there. That's it. Amber's son James came to visit for three days and you already know what I'm about to say. The cameras were not allowed there because Andrew is not having it. First of all, Andrew wants no parts of Team Mom and he does not want his son showing on Team Mom, which is probably one of the smartest things you ever did, Andrew. I'm trying to understand how how Amber has any type of friends. I really don't understand it. Her friend asks how James felt about her new bald boyfriend, Gary. And of course, Amber says that James loves him. You know what? I just have lost interest talking to anything about Amber because she's a bitch. And I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. And I don't like her. The friend asks, I thought you were supposed to be taking James to go, you know, meet with Leah and them. Have you spoken to Leah? You're a mess and um, you're messing up your life. And I hope you know you're about to lose Leah. Like you're literally about to lose Leah completely. This is how Amber explains the situation. I told them at one point, I was like, I'll try to go over there or something like that. And sorry, but it didn't work out. And then I felt bad that Leah was feeling some type of way, but I couldn't understand how she was feeling because y'all are 25 20 minutes away. Yeah. Away. And she hasn't tried to come hang nothing. She's blaming Leah for not visiting her more since they're so close. And she's sitting here and she's comparing the fact that she sees James more often than Leah. And none of this is Amber's fault, y'all. None of this is Amber's fault. And she's literally comparing James and Leah and says she lives only 20 something miles away. She's right in the area. But I don't see her. So whose fault is that? It's your fault because people don't want to foster a relationship with you because you're nasty and you have your priorities all effed up. My son, he's been in my life more than, than she has. Mm -hmm. And he lives in California. So what does that tell you? Where's Leah? Obviously it's not me. Cause if I'm sitting here seeing my son all the time and working with his dad, hmm. How the f am I seeing my son all the way in California, but I can't see my daughter down the street? Amber is so selfish and disgusting. It's annoying. Now we have a House Hunters episode that I couldn't care less about. I'm really sorry to tell you. Girl, like I said, leave August alone. Focus on your kids. The next 180 days, Leah doesn't have to have any contact with Jeremy whatsoever. And drop offs for Addie will be with only Jeremy's mom. So Leah has no intention of keeping Addie away from her dad, but um, she can't control what he does when she's there. So if he chooses not to act on the parenting plan they have in place, that's on him. Anniversary celebration date. There was nothing special going on in this conversation. He did not propose. So, yeah, let's move on. So we get into this conversation about having a baby when we should be talking about wedding plans. But that's just me. But anyway... Um, Mackenzie goes into the complications that pregnancy poses for her diabetes. And she asks Cassania, would you be okay with never having children? What if they say that I can't have children? And Cassanio reassures her that no matter what, he wants to be with her. Kate takes Nova for her visit with April and Nick. So Kate is now on the phone as they are already inside the place eating or whatever. And she lets Tyler know on the phone that she gets instant anxiety whenever she sees April. Well, Tyler says, you know, it's okay to say hi, even though you're estranged. Tyler says you can make sure that you're safe and your kids are safe, but you can still say hi, give her a hug and tell her you love her. So their time is done and April comes back to the car. And Kate and April give each other a hug and April says that she needs to talk to her later. That's it for this week's review. Actually, not really, because I'm going to do another review and uh, there will be other shows I'll be incorporating. But I just I was backed up on this one. Okay, I had to catch up anyway, guys. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.